Bam Margera has really gone through a lot over the last few years, and he's been struggling with substance abuse issues for even longer. Multiple arrests, he was fired by the Jackass franchise, lawsuits, custody battles. It's been very unfortunate to see him struggle, but the great news is that Bam Margera has been sober now for over eight months, and that is truly great to see. He gave a wide-ranging interview to Us Weekly and talked about really what his strategy is for being sober this time, uh, how he's approaching all of that, his current relationship with his former Jackass castmates, and so much more. Now, this all started really about a decade ago where we started to see strong signs of Bam dealing with substance issues. A lot of people feel like the, the tragic loss of the great Ryan Dunn had a major impact on him. And since then, we've seen the very high profile incidents that have gone on with him. And Bam, of course, was let go by the Jackass franchise. His former director, Jeff Tremaine, actually had a restraining order taken out against him. Ultimately, Bam, though, filed a lawsuit against Jackass for that termination, which he later dropped. Now, Bam has stayed in contact over the years with some of those cast members like Steve-O, but he says even now he's kind of just staying in a very small bubble so he can protect his peace of mind and his sobriety. I thought this was really nice to see. I know those of us who grew up watching Bam on Jackass, Viva La Bam, all of the amazing things he's done have really been rooting for him to kind of pull through in this. And so this is kind of where it all got started with him as it pertains to the legal battle with Jackass. So this is from June of 2021. Jackass director granted three-year restraining order against Bam Margera. You could see Jeff testified on Tuesday in front of an LA judge. He issued it. Uh, he says that the actor had allegedly sent him death threats for months beginning in February. Uh, you have messages and screenshots he provided. Now this all stemmed from Bam's claim that the producers of Jackass forced him to go to a rehab facility for a condition of his participation in the film. Bam says he was tortured, he was very angry about it, and of course Tremaine says that he was being threatened and produced text messages that showed that. The judge granted that restraining order as a result. Bam ended up filing a lawsuit contesting all of this. He said it wasn't fair that he was being held to the standard that other people might not have been held to. I think a lot of people though look back on that and can see the intention behind it. And I don't think that it's really fair to suggest that they were trying to take advantage of him or do anything other than sincerely help him. And I'll show some examples of that. I mean, I don't really see how they could be being fake here and have any other genuine intention, but other than trying to help Bam. Bam has had a lot of problems. I mean, it's it's totally fair to acknowledge that. He's had more problems than most people. You've got Steve-O who is celebrating 16 years of sobriety. And I'm not sure that many people thought Steve-O was ever gonna get sober. And he's now like this, great example of sobriety but for bam he still seems to be very upset with tremaine and and knoxville particularly so you can see here bam was seeking millions of dollars in damages in filing that lawsuit citing defendants inhumane abusive and discriminatory treatment of plaintiff margera for the wrongful termination of him from the jackass franchise he created it said in march 2020 they signed him for the film now called Jackass Forever, which was released without him. The conditions of that contract required him to participate or agree to a wellness agreement, obligated him to complete multiple daily drug tests. The suit claims that while Margera was in a rehab facility in 2019, Spike in Knoxville uh, accosted him and coerced him into signing the draconian agreement. Paramount terminated the contract in August 2020, citing a violation of the agreement but then after Margera already had been filming scenes and developed ideas for the film, the majority of which are being used in the Jackass Forever suit, uh, the film, the suit claims. It goes on to say defendants went so far as to employ a doctor who FaceTimed with Margera every morning to ensure Margera took the cocktail of pills that Paramount's medical team prescribed to him. Pills that left him physically and mentally drained, depressed, and a shell of his former self. Bam said in a statement at the time, I'm pissed off, angry, hurt, and shattered that Johnny Jeff's uh, spike in the Studios and producers ripped off my creativity, content, and stunts to make this movie, fired me without justification, and refused to pay for my work. I created this franchise before any of these guys ever got involved. What is the truth? How was Jackass formed? Well, I do think Bam has a point about that. For those of us who remember those CKY videos, what became Jackass very much resembled a lot of that CKY, for sure. Bam had a significant major impact on the direction of Jackass which in some ways looked like a reskinned or rebranded version of what those CKY videos were. 
Now, Johnny Knoxville tells his story. He originally was trying to get into acting and his path to Jackass, he wasn't really like a stunt man before this got started. It was really that BAM crew. Knoxville said in an interview with Maxim that he wanted to be an actor before he left high school. He packed his bags, moved to Hollywood. He wound up in a few commercials and an extra and some projects, but he couldn't get that big role. So he told Maxim, I was making my living doing commercials for things like ESPN, Mountain Dew and Bud Light. And I was a complete whore because I had a young baby and I needed to make money. He said, I had an idea for an article where I would test different types of self-deterrence equipment on myself. Many magazines wanted the story, but nobody wanted the liability. They ended up shopping the idea of Jackass around the TV networks, and they eventually got MTV to sign up. And the show became an, a huge success, as we all know. So it's kind of a mixed bag there. There were a combination of outside people that were involved in Jackass and kind of helped get it on television. But Bam also played a huge role in what that show looked like, and it's very comparable to those CKY tapes. Now, Bam ended up dropping that lawsuit. It says Jackass co-creator Bam Margera has dropped his lawsuit over his firing from the franchise. Documents filed said that Bam asked the judge in his case uh, to be dismissed with prejudice, meaning it can't be refiled. It's unclear if there was any settlement there. There was no mention of that occurring. Now, to give you an idea about how Johnny Knoxville felt about that lawsuit at the time and his omission, Bam's omission from that Jackass film, he said, we wanted him all throughout the movie, but unfortunately that's not the way it worked out. It's really heartbreaking. I love Bam, we all love Bam. He's our brother, you know. You just hope he takes it upon himself to get the help that he needs because we all care about him a lot. He was asked if he was surprised by the lawsuit. He said yes and no, because he's in such a way that anything is possible, so something will break your heart, but it might not shock you. I guess I just don't really get the motivation that the film directors and producers would have had to have forced out for sure their most popular star, Bam, or one of the most popular stars from this film, given what that does to the film. So it, it just seems like the intentions were sincere. Maybe it wasn't done right, maybe it wasn't done perfectly, but I think that they were certainly really trying to encourage Bam to get help. But the good news is Bam is eight, mo eight months sober now, but how does he feel about his former Jackass castmates and will he ever return to the series? Well. He answers that question definitively in this new interview with Us Weekly. I thought this was one of Bam's more honest interviews where he really pinpoints exactly kind of why he was falling back into addiction and what rock bottom looked like for him as opposed to others. He says, when you hear the term rock bottom, you usually picture somebody out on the street with no money and nowhere to go. Well, rock bottom for a millionaire is very hard to define, but when, uh, when we met, I was in multiple lawsuits, pulling my hair out during a never ending custody battle. I was ready to check out and she saved me. So now he's eight months sober. He says I was a mess at the time, but I've changed my ways and could not be more on the right path. If anybody out there thinks they're doomed, it's too late and there's no help or hope. Think again. Later in the interview, this is really interesting. They asked him, what did he think the root of his problems were? And he just really described this. I think spot on having a lot of money and not knowing what to do with it. My face is recognizable. So anywhere I go, I'd get free drinks and free drugs. If I was looking for it also losing my passion for skateboarding, not having passion for anything really and boredom, the hair of the dog situation too. If you wake up feeling like shit from drinking, you know that if you have a beer, you're going to feel better. The cycle always repeats and to break that cycle is very hard to do. You can also see that that, that, intelligence is returning to him. You could really see that like he wasn't making a lot of sense in the past. And this is a very sharp and well thought out response from him. So I'm, I'm very happy to, to see this and to really see that level of self-reflection from him. They pointed out that Johnny Knoxville and Steve-O congratulated him on being sober last year. And they asked if he had spoke to them or made amends. He says, well, I've always been friends with Steve-O, but right now I don't really like having a phone just because I want to concentrate on my sobriety and skateboarding and just get back to loving life again with no interruptions. When the time comes, I'll see everybody. But to be honest, and this is where, you know, this is unfortunate. He says, what Knoxville and Jeff Tremaine did to me, I don't think I could ever forgive. They ruined the legacy of Jackass. I've broken every bone in my body, 16 staples in the head. The list just goes on. But to be portrayed by Jackass, stabbed in the back and abandoned, was the worst feeling ever. They asked if he'd be open to collabing with them again. He says, nope, it's done. It's absolutely done. There's no more Jackass as far as I'm concerned. It's been ruined. I think before you make any permanent decisions on something like this, just given the incredible history that they all have that you know, you should be at least willing to get in the same room and have a rational conversation and give them a chance to speak and, and just never say never because 
Bam returning. I mean, really, in some ways, I don't. I mean, I don't believe that it's been ruined. It's Jackass has not been ruined because if you did something with with Bam returning, well, now it's huge again and now it's massive again. But uh, whether or not they ever speak again or talk again, I just think if they got in a room, maybe things would be different. And you put all the social media stuff aside. But the the most important thing here is it's great to see Bam sober. And he seems to really have a good mindset about things and just taking his time and being patient and working through all of that. So we're wishing Bam all the best. And it's just been so great to see. That is your latest update from Rockfeed. Be sure to hit that subscribe button for the latest news and updates right here.